Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Chris Cubberness. My friends call me Cubby, and this is the Cubby Cast, a semi regular podcast. <laughs> I got to say that I've been doing a very bad job of keeping this up to date. Consistency is key, folks, and I have been dropping those keys on the floor, but I'm picking them back up and I'm making sure that I'm delivering content to you guys that want it. So thank you so much for listening. If you like this kind of content, think about subscribing to this podcast. Uh, it's on SoundCloud, it's on iTunes, it's on Spotify, it's uh, in CD format through Columbia House. No, it's not, I'm joking. Uh, if anybody remembers Columbia House out there, big shout out to Columbia House. Someone should buy that up and change it. But anyway, here's the topic for today. And I can't stress this enough. It is a bit of a loose topic because I think that there's a lot of different opinions when it comes to this. And I'm not necessarily following on one specific opinion. My mind changes constantly on it. My current mind on it is a bit maybe controversial, but the topic today is mentorship. And if mentorship is actually a good thing or if it's a bad thing. Now, I might do a little cop out here and say, well, it's a gray zone. But I will say that I think there's some parts of mentorship that make absolutely no sense. And I'm going to dive into those today. So if you're in an internship or sorry, internship, if you're into in a mentorship or you have a mentor or you are a mentee, this episode might be for you. Or if you're thinking about getting into a mentorship, this is going to drop some knowledge on you on what you should watch out for, um, how to make your mentorship or, or mentee, uh, your, your role as a mentee better. And if you are a mentor and you're mentoring people, I'm going to drop some knowledge on you guys on what I think you could be doing better or what you should avoid as a mentor. So let's drop into my first opinions on mentorship and just give you guys a little breakdown of what my thoughts are on being a mentor or mentorship in general. And I would say that there's one aspect of mentorship that I don't understand and, and I don't necessarily buy into. And that is that if you're a mentor, a lot of people will like DM me and say, hey, I want you to mentor me. I want you to teach me. I want to learn from you. And I, and I want to learn from your mistakes. And, and I think that, you know, mentors also on this side, we want to help people avoid those mistakes. At least that's our intent, right? That's, that's our sort of, you know, uh, first assumption or first uh, place of starting. Like it starts from the good place to say, okay, we've done something we want to mentor something, somebody so that they don't have those same pitfalls as we did. And, and that's a natural thing to do, right? You want to help people. You want to help them grow faster. You want to take your learnings that you learned as an entrepreneur, a business person, a whatever it is, a basketball player, whatever it is that you've done, and you want to try to apply it to somebody who's looking to do the same thing. The trouble with this, and this is the whole sort of what that's based on, is that you got to where you are as a mentor by making mistakes, right? A, a sharp sword is not sharpened by uh, a perfect cloth. It's sharpened by a stone. And what I mean by that is that to sharpen a sword, to create a warrior, to create an amazing basketball player, an amazing entrepreneur, an amazing chef, an amazing mother, an amazing father, an amazing whatever it is, it takes making mistakes. It takes screwing it up. And if you're trying to be a mentor and trying to help people avoid those mistakes, in actuality, you could be doing them a disservice. You could be not doing them a favor because you're helping them to avoid these pitfalls. But that's not what's going to make a strong entrepreneur. That's not going to make a strong individual in the certain chosen profession or field or, or craft that they're doing. Um, and so this is, a, this is my fundamental issue with mentorships is that, yes, your heart might be in the right place. You might want to help people avoid the pitfalls. You want to help them be a better whatever it is. But the only way that they can do that is by going out, doing it, and learning from their own mistakes. If you're constantly sitting there going, oh, I wouldn't do that because uh, that, that's a bad idea, or wouldn't, I wouldn't do this, or hey, I think you should do that. The thing is, is that you, as that incredible mentor, you've learned all those things through hard trial and error. And so... I really caution people when they're going into mentorship to think about why is it that they want to do this and how can they be effective in this? Because if they're there to avoid, to help people avoid these mistakes, 
I don't actually think that's going to do them any good. It's actually going to put them on a back foot. It's actually going to put them not necessarily in a position to be as strong as they could be, right? Michael Jordan didn't get to the place where he was at as an amazing basketball player by, you know, having somebody show them exactly how to hit every single shot perfectly. No, he had to throw thousands of free throws. He had to throw a thousand of jump shots. He had to try to dunk a thousand times, a million times, whatever it is. The 10,000 hours, you know, that that I believe, um, what's his name, Malcolm Gladwell talks about, you have to put in that time. You have to make those mistakes. You have to screw up. And if you're not willing to make those mistakes, if you're not willing to screw up, you're not going to be any good. You're actually going to be crappy. So I caution mentors out there that want to help people get through things to think about what actually is going to make this person, this, uh, this mentee, what's actually going to make them better. So I would say be careful and think really clearly about your mentorship and think of it like you're a teacher. Like if you're going to teach somebody, you have to have a curriculum, you have to have a setup, you have to have tests, you have to have, I mean, that's why school works the way it works. And I know there's a lot of people out there that hate school, that think school is bunk, that you can learn more life lessons, or you could skip university. I'm not going to get into that debate here. That's for another podcast, honestly. But I will say that there's something interesting about the way school is set up in a sense, like it is set up for you to learn, to make mistakes, to get better, to continue to progress, to get tested, to do all those things that actually turn you out to be better at something. In my mind, at least, and in my experience, that's the way it's been. So as a mentor, I think you really have to be careful about who you take on. I don't take on anybody as a mentor. I've stopped. I've tried before. I failed because I just don't have the time and energy to be a proper teacher, to actually do a great job for somebody. Because at the end of the day, that's the that's the contract. That's the, the sort of trade-off. It's like, hey, you get to maybe work for me for free or to do you know, an internship or you get to be around. You get to absorb these things through osmosis. But that's not necessarily also going to get them to where they need to be because there's context behind business decisions. There's context behind, you know, learning how to be an incredible chef. You have to actually get your hands dirty and do it. So if you're going to take on a mentor or a mentee, I should say, not a mentor, if you're going to be a mentor, take on a mentee, I think you really have to figure out what is the curriculum. So that's my tip for you mentors out there is like really sit down and say, okay, who is this person that I'm going to mentor? What are their challenges? What are they trying to get to? How far can I move them? And how do I not help them? Or how do I not get in their way of making mistakes? I think that's a key component of being a great mentor is saying like, how do I help them, you know, you know, maybe, you know, take the learnings that I've learned, but then apply them to their own situation and not necessarily be there to protect them, right? Like if you're a helicopter uh, parent, you know, we also have this issue with kids now. A lot of people have said that we've protected our kids too much. You know, we used to send them out uh, on the playground all by themselves, and now we don't do that anymore. We very much hover around and make sure that they're safe, and that hasn't created independent kids. I'm not an expert in this at all. I've just, you know, a lot of people have commented on this, psychologists, childhood development people, sociologists, they've, they've looked at sort of how things are going with kids and, and it's similar, right? Like you don't want to be a helicopter mentor. You want to give them some of the tools, teach them some of the things that you've uh, been taught and you've learned over the years, but ultimately they have to make their own mistakes. Ultimately they have to do those, those things. They have to walk the walk. And if you're there to help them avoid every single issue and challenge, then they will not be good. So that's my tip for you out there, mentors. Now, mentees, if you're getting into a mentorship with one with one person, I will say that I've seen um, a trend or rather I've seen a, I don't know what you want to call it, a tendency for mentorships or these kind of things to go sour because the mentee is not getting enough out of it. I think that what they're trying to do is maybe get their expectations are set too high. And I think if you're a mentee, I think you should really lay out to the mentor, this is what I would like 
this is what I'm going for. Um, I've had many people ask me for mentorships, but it's been very loose. Like they don't really have a direction. They don't know what they want to learn. They don't know what they, they just want to be around. And I get that. I get that, that tendency completely because you want to be around successful people. You want to be, you want to try to absorb things through osmosis completely understand. However, it's not going to do you or them a favor. If you want to be an incredible mentor or sorry, mentee, I think you should come in with a, an idea of exactly what you want. I want to learn these 10 things. I want to do it within this period. I will do this. I'll be there these three days a week or four days a week. I'm going to do this for you. And this is what I want. If you came with that, and I've never seen anybody do this. So I, I think it would be, if somebody came with this, I might say yes to a mentorship. If they came with a plan and said, this is what I want to do. This is how I'm going to do it then I could probably say yes, because it shows initiative, it shows thought, it shows that they are concerned with their own self-development and what they want to do, versus what I usually get is, hey, I mentor me. Okay, in what aspect? And what do you, like, they're putting the onus on me to do all the work to find out how to teach this person better, which it's not going to work. Like, it's it's simply not. You have to understand most successful people are successful for a reason. They're busy. They are doing stuff. They're running companies. They're being a, an athlete. They're being an Instagram model. I don't know, whatever it is that they're doing. So they don't have time to say, hey, I'm going to work out this whole thing for you. Now, going back to one of my first advices, though, for mentors to have a program, that's where you kick in and say, okay, these are the things that you want to learn. Here's how I would go through that and teach you these things, right? So the onus is now on you. But I would say if you have this ping pong with this type of person where they're coming with, this is what I want to do, this is what I want to learn, this is how I'm going to do it, then it's your duty as a mentor to curriculatize them, if that's a word, curriculatize it, or to um, uh, programize, programize it, that's not a word, what the hell am I talking about? To put it into a program to say, here's what I will do for you, here's how we're going to do it, and try to stick to those things. Otherwise, it's loose. Otherwise, it's like, yeah, manana, we'll do that later. We'll do that tomorrow. I don't know about this. Like, And it just floats and the person isn't getting the most effective use out of you and you're not getting the most effective use out of that person. So I would say mentees, go out, understand what you want, understand what you want to do and make a, a very good pitch proposal to your mentors. Mentors, once you get those kind of pitch proposals and you've agreed, really start to lay out how are you actually going to do this. And I think if you do that, I think you'll be in a much, much better position and you'll have a greater time and you'll want to mentor more because you'll have had a good experience. So that's the podcast for today, folks, on mentorship. Let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know how you feeling about mentorship. I would love to hear about your experience. If you've been a mentor, if you've been a mentee, I would love to know how did you, you know, how'd you do it? what was successful, what was not successful. I'd love to hear from you because I think there's lots of things to say on this topic and I think it's super interesting and I want to I wanna eventually do it for real, real. But there's got to be some things that come together for me to do that. So thank you so much for listening. Please, if you like this kind of content, subscribe. We're going to be doing much, much more of it, both video and on audio. If you're listening to this on audio, you know, you can check it out on video as well on YouTube and probably on my Instagram and all those kind of things. So adios amigos. We'll catch you later.